Hello and welcome back, all you amazing Slashaholics. Thank you for coming back each episode. Yes, thank you from the bottom of our, of our hearts. And big thank yous for everybody that's been ordering stuff from our Etsy shop. So happy you guys are taking part of that. We seriously cannot express how much gratitude we have for all of that. Yeah. Well, enough of this ooey gooey show of emotion. Let's get into some outer space gore. Oh, you mean like body parts hanging? Yes, body yeah. parts everywhere. And this one is, isn't even as gory as it was meant to be. Yes. Um, so when they first tested this, this it failed with audiences. Audience members got up, walked out from it. They were throwing up in the aisles. They were fainting. And, and people were passing out. Right. It was, it was just too much gore. Yeah. And there's still quite a bit of gore left in there. Um, I can only imagine what the original director's cut was like before they started cutting out some of the gore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Of course, this version has been, the, the original version has since been lost to time, um, which means we will never get to see Paul W.S. Tom, uh, Paul W.S. Anderson's true version of what this epic space horror could have been. And if that name, W.S., Paul W.S. Anderson, sounds familiar, it's probably because you know something that he has done, whether it be the evil, uh, Resident Evil franchise, the first Mortal Kombat film that came out in the 90s. He's, he's done a lot over the years. It was actually because of the Mortal Kombat movie doing so well in the box office that they threw this movie to him. Actually, they initially offered him X-Men and he turned it down because he, he did, wanted because to he do wanted something to gorier. Do, he wanted to do horror. He mm -hmm. wanted to go full on horror. Mm -hmm. Well, he got his wish with this. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, uh, what movie are we talking about? And remember, in our last episode, we were talking about it possibly, but in our in our humble opinion being a hundred percent part of another horror franchise well, well let's climb aboard a spaceship and travel through space time hell or possibly at least another dimension and tell you all about this epic sci-fi horror film that is Event Horizon. Event Horizon this is honestly like one of my favorite movies uh, it's one of those movies that um, just a real quick little blip it flopped when it first came it out. It terribly flopped. It, when it first came out, it had like a $60 million budget, and they, I think, made back $35 million. But in DVD and VHS sales and It very much had a cult following once it hit video, yep. and it just kind of blew up and had like a, a phenomenon in and of itself. Yep, it sure did. So uh, let's get to talking about it, though. Um, in 2047, we like the start of the film actually just gives us a scroll of where we've gone to get to 2047. Actually, mm -hmm. um, in apparently in 2015, we made our first uh, first colony on the moon. I, I, I guess I missed <laughs> that in the headlines. I know I missed it too. Um, but we, the movie picks up in 2047, um, which is seven years after they after the disappearance of the Event Horizon. Uh, a distress call is received, and it is from the Event Horizon, a starship that disappeared during its maiden voyage to Proxima Centauri, seven years before. So the ship mysteriously disappeared and then reappears in a decaying orbit around Neptune, um, and the rescue vessel, Lewis and Clark, is dispatched to investigate. Now, it is interesting to note that that was not what the public was told. Yes. The public was told that the mission was a complete and utter disaster and that the ship exploded and everyone on the aboard died. Yes. So, this salvage crew, yeah. that, that's what it is, they're a salvage crew, they are on shore leave for the first time in a very long time, Yeah. get tasked with going out and trying to figure out what the is going yeah. on. How with, the heck it just reappeared out of nowhere. Right. With the doctor that created the engine. So it's crew, Captain Miller, second in command, Lieutenant Stark, pilot Smith, medical technician Peters, engineer, engine, uh, Ensign Justin, Dr. DJ, and rescue technician Cooper is joined by the doctor that I afore aforementioned, William Weir, played by Samuel, and they travel to the event horizon. Uh, he briefs them on the ship's experimental gravity drive uh, with a simple visualization of how it folds space and time. The distress signal consists of a series of screams and howls, but DJ believes he hears a Latin phrase, Liberate me. Save me. Yes. 
So um, he, he actually shows them um, how, with a piece of paper. It's, it's actually been done in multiple movies since Stranger this. Things has even done it. Yeah, yeah, where you where you take this piece of paper, you've got a hole here on this end and a hole here on this end, and what's the shortest distance between two lines? Straight line. Nope. Nope. Sorry, Justin. You're Absolute wrong. zero. <laughs> Absolute zero. So then he folds the paper in half and puts the pen in between the two pieces of paper. And that's essentially what this gravity drive is supposed to do, and that's how he explains it to the crew. Uh, it is, as, as much as in layman terms as it is, it's basically an Einstein-Rosenbridge. If anybody's out there familiar with science or anything like that, that's what an Einstein-Rosenbridge is. Okay. So, upon boarding the Event Horizon, the crew finds evidence of a massacre. I mean, there's literally, like, blood and body parts spewed onto the walls. Um, as they search for survivors, the ship's gravity drive actually activates... And Justin uh, is pulled into the portal while they're while they're um, investigating the ship. You know, mm -hmm. so he's walking. Um, he is on a line so that they can pull him back out just in case uh, something were to happen as he was walking down into mm -hmm. this room. And yeah, the, the gravity drive activates. It pulls him into the black hole. They pull him back out, but a shockwave goes across the entire ship. And actually, it damages the Lewis and Clark, which was connected to the ship as well. Mm -hmm. Right. The crew are all forced to board the Event Horizon while Justin emerges in a catatonic state. They, he attempted suicide by decompression, which I, that was just... For the time... I that, remember when I was a teenager, probably younger than a teenager, in 1997, I was 14. So yeah, I was a teenager. Um, I, the first time I saw that, I was like, oh my god. I mean, yes, the effects don't necessarily I was I was going to well. say, up until this point, like, the visual effects of, like, the stuff floating around and what was supposed to be zero gravity is very yeah, cheesy today. Yeah, and seeing the blood in zero gravity and just the mm -hmm. way that it floats is a little bit not on par with what, right. what we see now. However... At the time, I was just like, oh my god. Like, I was mm -hmm. completely shocked by seeing blood come out of someone's eyeballs and, you know, other parts of it. I mean, he, he literally, like, had blood just kind of, like, seeping out of his mm -hmm. body because, hello, you're at, at zero gravity. Your body does all kinds of crazy things. Well, not just at zero gravity, but well, decompression he was out with in no into decompression into right. Space, into space. Right, right, right. So, but he is saved by Captain Miller, forcing the crew to place Justin in stasis. Smith and Cooper are sent to on a spacewalk to try to repair the hull of Lewis and Clark. Excuse me. Sorry. The crew uh, then starts having hallucinations. Vivid, horrifying Very. Loose hallucinations. Um, and they all correspond with their fears. Uh, Miller, who is, you know, kind of the head of the Lewis and Clark, he's the captain he's of the, the Lewis captain. and Clark, um, is... Played sees, by the incomparable Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, too. Lawrence Fishburne. Um, but he sees a subordinate who he was support, uh, forced to abandon, uh, to his death, uh, in a fire. <sighs> I know. Peter, the Peters sees her son with his legs covered in bloody lesions. And actually in the original version, she sees maggots on his legs and they had to take things like that out because people were just absolutely appalled by it. Mm. Um, and Weir sees an eyeless version of his wife urging him to join her. They discover a video log of the Event Horizon's crew having a gore orgy, because it's about the only thing that I can use to describe yeah, what was being a, happening a in that. a blood orgy is right. what I've seen it described as. Mutilating each other, and then shortly after first engaging... Or that All of this happened shortly after first engaging the gravity drive. Yeah, the video starts off, they're kind of like shooting around with each other. You know, it all seems real calm. And very then it like very much cuts to... Uh, just violence and gore and sexual violence that is... It's its also interesting to note that um, if you look at the timestamp on the video, the timestamp does not have a time jump. Right. Signifying that not only are they traveling through space, but time kind of seems a little wonky. Exactly. According to the ship, and Paul W.S. Anderson has confirmed this, the ship still thinks that it's 2040, yeah. not 2047. Not 2047, yeah. So, um... The log ends with a shot of the Event Horizon's captain holding his own eyes gouged from out from his their sockets and speaking a Latin phrase from the earlier distress call. DJ translate the complete phrase as liberate te tutum ex inferi. 
save yourself from hell. Yeah. So uh, Weir explains that the ship's drive opened a gateway to a hellish dimension outside of the known universe, outside of anything that anyone knows. Um, you know, when it comes to deep space exploration, you're going into realms that no one You're going in knows. blind. Yeah, yeah, you really are going in blind. And when you're not only going in blind, but you're using an experimental uh, gravity drive, drive right. and this is the very first time that it's ever been used, yeah, you never know what can happen. Um, but he also says that the event horizon has become sentient. Um, meaning that it has kind of a mind of its own and it's going to drive them all crazy. Which kind of explains everyone's vivid hallucinations and how it's prying into their deepest, darkest fears. Miller actually explained that, that the death of his subordinate that burned to death, he never told anyone about. Yeah, but yet the, but ship, the ship knew, knew. it. So. Which that's a little bit scary. Um, Miller decides that it is time to destroy the ship and orders an evacuation while Peter's he orders an evacuation, and everybody is kind of, like, getting all the supplies that they can. They're essentially going to um, take part of the ship and make it a lifeboat and explode the rest of it and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, so Peters is lured to her death by a hallucination of her son, and essentially the ship claims another person. Mm -hmm. Weir, who has now also gouged out his own eyes, which was just, that was just a sickening scene watching yes. him. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, is possessed by this evil presence. Uses an explosive device to destroy Lewis and Clark, killing Smith and blasting Cooper off into space. Weir kills DJ in one of the most visually disgusting ways that I wish we would have been able to see a little mm. bit more of. I um, wish we could show you, too. <laughs> uh, but YouTube won't let us. <laughs> no. But he, he basically viscerated him and cut him, I mean, stern his stomach... Him. Uh, there's actually, um, there's actually a deleted scene where Miller found him still alive with his intestines, intestines out. all out on the table. He was strung up from the the ceiling of the medical bay or whatever. Which we do see and a good chunk of that with him strung up and we, whatever. We, yes, we, we do. But he was still alive. Mm -hmm. and, and in which case, Miller had to put a bullet in his head to end his suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh... But then um, we are also corners Stark on the bridge of the Event Horizon. Uh, Miller confronts Weir and overpower uh, Weir overpowers him and initiates a ten minute countdown um, to activate the gravity drive and return to the other dimension. Cooper uses his spacesuit's oxygen supply to propel himself. What a smart man! I <laughs> He's lucky. Yeah, he's very, very yeah. lucky. Very. But he uses it to propel himself back to the ship and appears at the bridge's window. Weir shoots at him with some type of like harpoon gun. Uh, that's what it looked like. To yeah, me. like some kind of yeah, a har harpoon gun. That's right, probably the best way to describe it. <laughs> Shattering the window, causing Weir to be blown into space by the decompression. Miller, Stark, and Cooper survive and manage to seal off the ship's bridge. I'm still trying to figure that out how the whole scene was that. so cool, though. Seeing them all blown around everywhere and like hanging on for dear life. I just ugh. so many cool scenes in this film. Mm -hmm. uh, with their own ship destroyed, Miller plans to split the event horizon, like I was saying earlier, in two with explosives and use its forward section as a lifeboat. Um, while they're all doing this, he is attacked by hallucinations. Um, which turned out to be the resurrected and further mutilated Dr. Weir. Uh, Miller fights him off, and in this scene, I mean, it's like equal parts hallucination and Dr. Weir just being an absolute creep and saying some of the most horrific things. Like, he wants to take him into hell. He wants to show him what is on the other side. I mean, mm -hmm. there is so many things that... Um, I mean, we may as well just say it right now. It's that scene that made me and you, I think, both confirm that we think this is part of the Hellraiser franchise. That, that scene coupled with Weir before he gouged out his eyes and his eyeless deceased wife basically yes. saying to him almost verbatim what Pinhead says to 
what is it, Christie and the yeah, first Hellraiser, yeah, such sights to we show have you. such sights to show you. The yeah. line was so eerily similar. I was like, what the? Yeah, yeah. I mean, on top of that, there are many other things which we would like to get into in another video, which we will link down below. Absolutely. We're going to go off about Hellraiser and Event Horizon and how they go together and our own little conspiracy theory for how we think that they're actually part of the same Not franchise. just conspiracy theory. There is actually Con a confirmation. confirmation from Paul W.S. Anderson that he intentionally inferred Hellraiser with the gravity drive. Yep. And but we'll talk we'll about We'll talk that. about that more. You guys can better tune in for our next little tidbit. It'll be a short little video, but it's just gonna be us going off about how And we, we will have visual evidence to back up our our substantial absolutely to, to our uh, our outlandish claims. claims. Yes, yep. Thank you. The gravity drive activates pulling the ship's stern section into the black hole. Stark and Cooper enter stasis beside a comatose Justin and wait to be rescued. Yeah, absolutely. So, 72 days later, the wreckage of the Event Horizon is boarded by a rescue party who discover the survivors in stasis. Uh, Stark, when she wakes up, sees Weir posing as one of the rescuers and screams in terror, but wakes up realizing that it was a nightmare. I don't think she realized it was a nightmare because she was still screaming. Because Cooper and the rescue team try to calm her down but as as they're trying to calm her down, she's just sitting there screaming, and then suddenly the doors close up. And that's the end of the movie. So, um, I wish really, very much there would have been a sequel to this. Oh my gosh, I would have loved a sequel to this. I think they could still do a sequel to this. Maybe not with the same people, obviously, but they could very much do a sequel to this again. I would love to see the other side yes that hellish dimension that that we are talking about me too that justin saw i would love to very much love to see it it's probably too much to be held by uh -huh. the human mind yep but i would very much like to see at least glimpses of it right um the thing about something that i had thought about too is that they spend those 72 days in stasis in what was part of the Event Horizon. And if mm -hmm. the Event Horizon really did become sentient, then who knows if that If the sentience is if, still if attached to the yeah. whole of that one, or if it was... Cause, if it was just cause attached the, to the gravity right, drive. Right, because the gravity drive was in the other section that, when activated, started to go into the black hole, because that's basically what it did. It opened up a black hole. Uh, but... Miller destroyed it as it was going into the black hole. Right. So that is, I never, yeah, I never actually thought that is. Yeah, it'll interesting. be interesting. It would be interesting to see. Um, it would be interesting to see a sequel. It would be also be interesting to see a director's cut. I know Paul W S Anderson really had a lot more in mind for this film. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> they have lost practically every bit of footage that they could possibly have had. Um, the only thing that remains now is a lonely VHS tape, which... That's not 100% finished. It's missing, like, visuals, audio in certain spots and, and stuff like that. And even if they could get anything from it, it's it's crappy VHS quality. And I would still watch it. I would still watch it, too. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I would 100% watch it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, my personal thoughts on this film, I... I love this film so much. I... Personally, and y'all can come at me in the comments. I personally like it more than Alien. It is. I think it's a more compelling story over Alien. Alien's great with um, tension. It is. This it's, is it's good a creature on a completely feature. Completely different level. Alien is very much a creature feature, where you, where this is more of a psychological. It gets into your head, and it does not want to go away. Mm -mm. <laughs> I remember. I remember watching this shortly after it came out in the late 90s. I don't mm -hmm. think I watched it in theaters. I don't think I no, watched I it like right after it, it came out. But I remember watching it in the late 90s and then even in the early 2000s, I picked it up on VHS and it, I could only watch it like sporadically. In fact, I don't think I, I don't think until last year when we started doing all of this, like right before we started doing this entire channel, I sat down and rewatched it because I knew the 25th anniversary was last year, which is why we're doing this now. It's yeah. the 26th anniversary of it. But... I, I watched it with, like like we've always said, a different set of eyes. An mm -hmm. older set of eyes. Absolutely. And that's when I made that correlation with like the whole 
possible connection to Hellraiser and everything like that, and I appreciated it on a completely different level. Yeah, absolutely. I personally, when I was younger, I probably watched this movie like once a week. I, I have to admit, the guy that plays Justin, I had like a big old crush on him. I thought he was so cute, and I just wanted to watch the movie all the time because I thought he was just adorable. Um, the only other movie I can... Th that uh, good like, old baby bear. Yeah, two, two other movies I can think of that he was in was Idle Hands. Oh, yeah! Yeah. And uh, you Wasn't he in a, like a football movie or something, too? Varsity Blues, maybe? Maybe. Who knows? I feel like he was in some football movie. I... Lord knows. Um, but yeah, so I actually, I watched this movie quite often because it was, we owned it. We had it on VHS. I don't know if I purchased it. I don't know. I don't know how it came into my house, but it was in my house. <laughs> and, um, it doesn't seem like something my parents would have bought. Neither of them are really into scary movies. Um, it could have been my older sister. I don't know. She was, she was always into scary movies. She's the one who got me into scary movies. So, um, yeah, it, who knows where, where it came from, but I watched it weekly too much for a while too much um it's also something where, that we talked about earlier that this was for many of us our introduction to body horror mm -hmm. um it truly is a body horror you get to see there, the mutilation it, of bodies and it, it's it's cut in very quickly so they could get it past the sensors at the yep, time but exactly. yeah it, it's very gore heavy this is like i think this <laughs> I, I almost want to say that this kind of like maybe paved the way for like Saul and stuff like it that. It could have. Along. It could have. You know? Um I mean, you know, it wasn't too long after that that a lot of the Six years later we got Saul. Yep. And and it was really after Saw that that things really, as far as the gore goes, mm -hmm. took off. Mm -hmm. Well, Hallie, what do you think about this movie? Is it a bloody machete up for you? Oh fuck yeah. Two bloody machetes straight to the sky from us. Your horror, my, your horror mistresses in this world of new movie reviews. And we will definitely, you'll have to definitely talk about that other video where we talk about the Hellraiser connections because it's just too prevalent There's not too to much. talk about it. So with that, we're going to get this out of here. What are we going to do next, Sally? What do you think we should do? I don't know. Do you like Ice Nine Kills? <laughs> not, not really. really. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> inside jokes, inside jokes that aren't really all that inside. <laughs> but if you know Ice Nine Kills, they recently, well, recently, I say last, 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 last summer, year, last yeah. summer, they dropped uh, their brand new album with the lead single off of that being Hip To Be Scared, which parodies one of the great American psychos. The good old Patrick Bateman. Mm -hmm. So we are going to dig into... Patrick Bateman, the pinnacle American psycho, or is he? That's the question, really. You're kind Did of, he do it? Did he not? Who knows? We'll talk about that in our next video. So come back here in two weeks' time when we do that. Until then, make sure you slash that subscribe button, stab the like button, and ring -ling that great bell so you don't get buried alive and can stay up to date on all of our videos. And until then, we will see you in, in the, the afterlife. afterlife.